Hello and welcome to another update. In this one I'll be glossing over the latest developments from the front line after which I will be analyzing the situation in Bakhmut, why the Russians were so desperate to take it, what is the purpose, significance and importance of the city and why does Ukraine want to take it back. Is it enough that it's just a PR stunt or is there actually some strategic and tactical uh, reasoning behind uh, the decisions made? considering the huge losses that are taking place on both sides for the city. So starting out, the fighting continues across the whole Saporizhia front as Ukrainian forces continue their attacks south of Velikino Vasilka, south of Hulyaipole, south of Orihiv and in the direction of Serebyanki. And the Ukrainian forces do not have any gains over the past 24 hours in this area. As for the Bakhmut city, we see the Ukrainian forces continuing their attacks in all directions. And the Russian forces actually launched a counterattack where they managed to recapture some positions to the north and to the west of the city of Klishivka. You can see it in the picture on the screen right now. And then we have uh, some a Russian counterattack here south of Berhivka as well, where they managed to capture some territories here as well, as you can see on the screen right now. So why are both sides fighting so hard for Bakhmut? If you look at the picture on the screen right now, it is estimated that approximately 67,000 Ukrainian troops are located by Bakhmut. If these troops were located in the Zaporizhia front, they may have seen more uh, developments and more advances in that direction. How are they even able to consistently pour tens of thousands of troops towards the city and so on? So Bakhmut is located at a conjecture between two main highways, the E40 highway and the E50 highway, the one from the south and the one from the north. So these two highways that goes through Bakhmut are two major highways that go through all of Europe and essentially they end up in the city. So we have two major highways that goes in this direction. Then we also have two railways that goes from Dnipro to, and as well as from Kiev and they all both end up in Bakhmut as well and in the surrounding villages by Sloviansk and the Konstantinivka line. So this all means that Bakhmut is a city that the Ukrainians can heavily supply. I would even go a step further and say that is the best supplied city on the whole front line. So if we take that into consideration, that means that this is the area in which the Ukrainians are able to logistically support and supply the most amount of troops. Now, if we take a look at the Russian side as well, if we look east of Bakhmut, there's essentially nothing. There's the Severodonetsk River to the north that goes through this area, and it'll prove a major flank, uh, defensive flank for any Ukrainian forces trying to run any sort of offensive operations to the east. And as Wagner leader Prigozhin said, beyond the defensive line of Bakhmut, there's 30 to 40 kilometers of just open fields with no real forces there. So essentially, we're seeing, if we compare it to the, the supply roads on the Russian side, here there's only one major highway, then the others are uh, disconnected or uh, poorly supplied in comparison to this one that goes through Popasna. And they have no major railways that go th through. They have two that they could use if they manage to uh, recapture the lost positions as well as Siversk, or if they manage to uh, gain a better, uh, larger buffer zone to the south of the city, in the, like essentially capturing Konstantinivka, then they would have one from the south. But this, as it is now, they have no railways that goes to Bakhmut that they have full control over. This essentially means the Russians are way less supplied in Bakhmut in comparison to the Ukrainians. And the whole question I've always been asking is why or what advances are the Russians planning after Bakhmut? When in reality, I should have been thinking what advances could Ukraine make if they had control of Bakhmut? Because the whole operation about, around Bakhmut, why is it so important for both sides? It's not because it is important for further Russian incursion. Like Solonsky has been saying, he's saying that uh, taking Bakhmut opens uh, the field for um, many uh, other advances for the Russian forces. That is not the case. Taking Bakhmut 
declines Ukraine's ability to launch a major offensive by Bakhmut. It is clear to me now that the whole Saporizhia offensive was not the goal of the Ukrainian forces. This was all to subvert the attention from Bakhmut and their main goal was to actually hold on to the city. I say this because it is clear, especially now that we have seen the offensive going on for over a month, that the Ukrainians are unable to break through all of these five lines of defense that the Russian forces have prepared. This is way too much for the Ukrainians to go through, especially with no air superiority and with a firepower disadvantage. In comparison, if they had to launch an offensive to the east of Bakhmut, it would be much more doable, as there is essentially no defensive lines here. They could essentially just go straight east towards Luhansk and fight in the city there. That is how open this area is. They could, of course, have to fight at all of these major villages like uh, Popasna or Livka and all of these areas, but they could essentially make some proper uh, flanks in the south and in the north, especially with the Severodonetsk river in the north, which would allow them to essentially push all the way to Luhansk. Of course, I'm not going to say if it would succeed or not, that is too much speculation. But essentially, if the Ukrainians held Bakhmut and could gather up a large enough force, especially with the western weaponry, the western tanks and so on, and all of these roads that they could use both to the west and to the east of the city, they could essentially launch the biggest offensive power possible in this war through the city of Bakhmut. This is why they are fighting so hard to hold on to the city and why they fought so hard to take back the city. That is because the tactical and strategic significance of all of the supplies that can go through Bakhmut is essentially what would allow the Ukrainian forces to launch one major offensive to essentially cut the Russian occupation in two. That it would allow the Ukrainian forces to just ignore all of the like a continuation of the Kharkiv offensive if the Ukrainian forces managed to take Luhansk in the south they could push northwards and essentially take this whole area from Russian control and that would leave them with only the south and it would leave them with Donetsk as a frontline city already the same was Orlivka they could push down south to Mariupol which would essentially isolate this whole area and cut off the main bridge between uh, line bridge between Russia and Crimea. It would open for so many more opportunities if the Ukrainian forces had Bakhmut. It would allow them to launch a p much better realistic offensive in the Russian direction. And most importantly, they wouldn't have to go through five lines of Russian defenses. This is why the Russians sacrificed so much to capture Bakhmut. This is why the Ukrainians kept sending unit after unit, division after division, brigade after brigade, company after company towards the city and try to hold it at all costs. And even after losing it, they launched attack after attack to regain control over the city. Even today, we see them constantly pushing and pushing and pushing towards Klitschivka, towards Berhivka, towards the east of Orhova Vasilivka. All of this to regain control over the city and to push the Russians away from it. And if you look at the defensive positions, if you look at Klitschivka, the topography, everything is in favor of the Ukrainians and at a disadvantage for the Russians. So why would they want to take control over it? Even if we take a look at the pictures from the city right now, we can only see utter destruction across the whole city. Like, take a look at this. Where exactly are the Russians expecting to hold defensive positions? As soon as they place them, as soon as they prepare them, it'll be obvious to see where they are. And even if they make defensive positions, it will be completely useless under the rubble of the former city of Bakhmut. There's nothing left standing intact. Everything is destroyed. There's nothing but destruction. So why does the Russians have an interest in holding this city that has no significant importance in and of itself? That is because there is something greater beyond it, something that both sides are aware of, and in my opinion, that is the strategic importance 
of the supply lines that goes through the city. Why would they need to hold the defensive line here when it is so disadvantageous to the Russian forces? It is because it is necessary. Without this, they would have no defensive capabilities in this front. They would be exposed in open fields to any Ukrainian offensive in this direction. So that is why I believe Bakhmut is of very significant importance to both sides. To the Russian side to prevent any Ukrainian offensive in the area and uh, to the Ukrainian side to launch a major offensive in this direction. And that is all I have for this video. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.